I'm Wade Dooley and I'm here on a beautiful farm on a beautiful day, a little blustery. And I raise soybeans, rye and oats, rye and oats for uh, seed and sell it to customers. And I have my own seeding business, Dooley Egg Stewardship. And a farmer has hired me to come and drill his oats for him today. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. It's a beautiful day for this. All right, so this drill is a Landall 5531. Uh, I bought it in around 2015. So it's an older drill now. Uh, it's got quite a few acres through it. I've had to rebuild it once already. And uh, it'll be due in another year or two for another rebuild. Drills, like all pieces of farm equipment, need regular upkeep, regular replacement. Any of the wear parts, anything that engage, engages the ground, you've got to keep an eye on and make sure to maintain it. Uh, there's a ton of used drills on the market right now and a lot of the older ones are completely worn out and people are just hitching onto them and running out and trying to drill oats and thinking they're going to have a great yield and then they're all disappointed because the stand's bad because things weren't maintained. It's normal with any piece of equipment to get a little lax on that and get a little lazy or you get in a hurry and you say, oh, it's good enough. And then later on you see skips, you see really lousy emergence, you see yield reductions, and in the end, it's just better and cheaper to fix it when you can and then go to the field. If it delays you, okay, fine, but make sure it works before you take it out there. This drill is a little different than some on the market. This one has airbags for down pressure, which allows me to set in the field whatever uh, down pressure I need to have for the field conditions in that exact field. So in this field, I'm running a fair amount of down pressure because it's no-till and because I wanna make sure to cut through the residue. In a worked field, I would run almost no down pressure so that I'm not burying the seed too deep. And so I adjust it for every field. This machine has uh, depth control on the back end. All drills are a little different. They all have some version of depth control if it's a newer drill. If it's 50 years old, the depth control is simply how hard you work the ground. So the newer drills are better for this sort of thing. If you're wanting to raise oats for grain and you want yield, you've got to make sure to have a piece of equipment that actually can be adjusted in the field for the conditions you're in. So this handle I can move forward and backwards. Forward is shallower and backwards is deeper and it's controlled by this. So basically, if I want to go deeper with this, I'll set it back here and this will ride up higher, which allows, because we have the airbag pushing down, shoves everything down in the ground farther. So if we zoom in on these, you can see we've got a small seed box and then the large seed box. The small seed is for the clover or any legumes, any small seeded things that you're gonna run. And then the large seed box is where I put my oats or any large grains. The reason I want to keep these two things separate is because oats want to be planted at a fairly deep depth and the legumes, clovers, alfalfas, they all want to be very, very shallow, just in the ground. And so if you mix them all in the same box, then one thing's either going to be too deep or too shallow. And so if you can, you want something you can have a small seed box on. Now I've done it before where everything was mixed together and the results were fine. Fine is not great. When you're wanting to have a uniform stand of oats and after harvest you want a nice uniform stand of clover for uniform nitrogen availability for the next crop, you want to make sure to do it right the first time because you don't get do-overs out here. So if we can zoom in here on these units, you can see that we've got two separate tubes going into each planter unit. The large tube comes from the large box, so we've got oats coming down of it. The small tube comes out of the small seed box, that's where the clover comes. And if you can see in between the disc openers, to the front is where the oats drop, so they get in the deepest part of the trench. And to the back, once the trench is already starting to close, is where the clover and legumes come. And so that allows the legumes the small seeds to be just barely planted in the ground. You can see a few on top, and as that's how you want it to be, if you're running a decent rate, you're going to have a few clover seeds on top of the ground, and the rest will be just below. 
the soil surface. And the oats will be deeper than that. So, the press wheels do a good job of closing the trench, and that has a lot to do with the way they're designed, but also the field conditions we're in. This field is just about optimum for moisture and dryness. We don't want it too dry where it's all just blowing around, but we also don't want it so wet that I can make a mud ball. So, this soil is just about perfect. The t seed trench is opening nice, and it's closing nice, and it's packing nice, and when we're done, this whole field is just gonna be uniform, and it should all emerge within a few days of each other, and that's the ideal.